Well, you know, if you're visiting London, you're probably going to want to check out Trafalgar Square, which is one of London's most popular destinations. In this video, can't wait for you to check it out because I'm going to highlight some history as well as some wonderful things to do in and around Trafalgar Square. Hi everyone, Ugo Renze here. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe if it's your first time here because we put out weekly videos about the London property market as well as living and enjoying this incredible city. In this video, I'm gonna be highlighting one of London's most famous locations, which is Trafalgar Square. Its history dates back to the 1820s and boy has it been a popular destination ever since. When Trafalgar Square was first laid out back in the 1800s, it was part of a grand plan to improve the layout and aesthetics of the City of London. It's named after the Battle of Trafalgar, where the British Navy won victory in 1805, led by Admiral Lord Nelson. It was redeveloped by John Nash, and the square design was overseen by this architect who created the basic layout, featuring fountains, plinths, and a central column with the statue of Nelson. The Nelson's Column was completed in 1843 and stands at 169 feet tall with the statue of Admiral Nelson at the top. Four lion statues guard the column as well as four plinths. Three whole statues of British military figures, Generals Sir Charles James Napier, Sir Henry Havelock, and King George IV. It's a central location for public gatherings, protests, celebrations, and events, and is a focal point for New Year's Eve celebrations in London. Renovations include removal of traffic lanes to create a more accessible and vibrant public space, and Trafalgar Square is one of London's most visited tourist attractions. Every year it hosts various events including cultural exhibitions, outdoor concerts, and temporary art installations. Things to do include the National Portrait Museum, which was founded back in 1856 with the first portrait gallery in the world. It's founded to collect and display portraits of famous British individuals, and initially it was a private residence on Great George Street. As the collection grew, it required a larger space to accommodate its expanding collection, and in 1896, the gallery moved to its current location at St. Martin's Place. It's a purpose-built building to house the growing collection and is known for its impressive neo-Gothic architecture. The collection includes portraits of various notable British figures including monarchs, writers, artists, politicians, and celebrities. The National Portrait Gallery houses some of the most iconic portraits in British history, including the Shandness Portrait of William Shakespeare, the Armada Portrait of Queen Elizabeth I, an Albert Charles Chilin portrait of Mary Seacole. It offers educational programs, exhibitions, and events that engage the public and promote an appreciation of British history and culture. Next door to the National Portrait Gallery is the National Gallery. This institution was founded back in 1824, and its location is on the north side of Trafalgar Square. It too is a neoclassical building designed by William Wilkins, an architectural landmark, and adds to the cultural significance of Trafalgar Square. It offers British and European art and an extensive collection of Western European art dating from the 13th to the 19th centuries. It features works by Leonardo da Vinci, Vincent van Gogh, and Claude Monet. Collections include The Fighting Temeraire by J.M.W. Turner, the Sunflowers by Vincent van Gogh, Bathers at Asineras by Georgia Seerot, and The Madonna of the Pinks, La Madonna de Garofani by Raphael. It hosts various temporary exhibits showcasing different aspects of art and history. They also offer educational programs, including lectures and art workshops to engage and inform visitors about the world of art. Conservation efforts include commitment to preserving and restoring its collection, employing skilled conservators to maintain the artworks for future generations. Along Trafalgar Square, you've also got Paul Mall, but as they say around here, Pall Mall. It's a famous street in the city of Westminster from the St. James's Place into Trafalgar Square. It dates back to the 17th century, and it was originally a game called Palais Mall similar to croquette. 
At the end is St. James's Palace, which is a historical royal residence and the official residence of the monarch until the 19th century. Known for its exclusive gentleman's club, you've also got the Athenaeum, founded in 1824, and the Travelers Club moved to Pall Mall from 12 Waterloo Place back in 1826. Alongside, you've got parks and greenery of St. James's Park and Green Park. Institutions located here include the Royal Society, which is the world's oldest independent scientific academy dedicated to promoting excellence in science. Also, the Institute of Contemporary Arts, ICA, which puts on club nights and film festivals, gigs and expeditions, talks, and digital art. It's an interplay and an interaction at the core. Monuments along Pall Mall include Duke of York Column, a tribute to the Duke of York, as well as the Cenotaph, a war memorial. Alongside, you've got some upscale shopping, including bespoke tailors and high-end retailers. The beauty of Trafalgar Square is also is that it's located on the edge of theater land, so let's highlight some fantastic theaters nearby. You've got His Majesty's Theater, which is in Haymarket, which is famous for hosting The Phantom of the Opera, one of the longest running and most beloved musicals in the world. You've also got the Theater Royal Haymarket, located on Haymarket, and they offer a variety of theatrical productions, including classical plays, contemporary dramas, and occasional musicals. Or the Criterion Theater on Piccadilly Street, known for comedy shows, including the long-running production of a comedy about a bank robbery. Also, there's a London Coliseum on St. Martin's Lane, home to the English National Opera, and hosts various operas, ballets, and musicals. For housing, Pall Mall is one of London's most prestigious and sought-after addresses. Properties in the area had an overall average price of £9 million over the past year. Overall, sold prices in Pall Mall over the last year were 741% up on the previous year and 92% up from the 2017 peak of £4.7 million. For transport, it's a great location where you've got two stops of Charing Cross, Piccadilly, as well as Green Park nearby. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video where we've highlighted some history as well as some fantastic as well as not so well-known things about Trafalgar Square. If you want to know more about any part of London, please make sure to reach out because I love showing off the best of London. And if this is your first time, you might consider subscribing as I put out weekly videos about the London property market as well as living in this incredible city. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great tips and information about the London property market and living in this fabulous city. So that's Ugo Orense with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.